Welcome to our next video in the series on multiple myeloma and in this video we're going to look at another important complication of myeloma namely anemia and this is a complication that occurs in at least three out of four patients when they first present with this condition but over time we see this in more than 95 percent of all patients at some stage of their disease. So a very important concept to understand and also to help you understand how to treat it. So what is anemia? In essence anemia refers to a decrease in the number of red blood cells and red blood cells are these specialized little cells that almost look like little bags carrying a special protein called hemoglobin or in short HB and hemoglobin is a protein to which oxygen can bind so you can see from this if you have a lack of red cells you will also have a lack of hemoglobin and thus um, may lack the capacity to carry enough oxygen around the body and that in essence is what anemia entails. Now to understand the mechanisms by which myeloma can cause anemia it is helpful to first understand how red blood cells are made in a healthy person. So let's go back to our bone here and inside this bone is bone marrow. The bone marrow is the factory of blood and part of this factory um, contains what we call stem cells and stem cells are specialized cells from which all the different blood cells are made and in anemia we focus of course on red blood cells so stem cells go through a number of steps to produce red blood cells and these red blood cells will then go and carry oxygen around to the different organs in the body and I'm going to draw a kidney here the kidney is only one of many organs that need oxygen and I'm drawing it because the, the kidney plays a central role in the control of red blood cell production how does that work well the kidney contains oxygen sensors so when the red blood cell delivers um, oxygen to the kidney it will sense the amount of oxygen that is being delivered and if there is not enough oxygen such as in patients with anemia the kidney will start to produce a special hormone called erythropoietin or in short for us EPO. So EPO is a hormone that will be produced by the kidneys and to a lesser extent in the liver and that will then stimulate the bone marrow to make more red blood cells. So low oxygen in the kidneys you find an increase in EPO and an increase in production here and an increase in red cells there and then the red cells as they increase will deliver more oxygen to the kidney and the feedback loop is complete and everything is back in balance. In addition the bone marrow needs a range of ingredients to make red blood cells. One of these would be iron that's why the most common form of anemia on earth is iron deficiency anemia but iron plays an important role also in patients with myeloma there's also a vitamin called vitamin B12 and another one called folate or folic acid and without going into too much detail let's just say that all of these are very important in the production of red cells in the marrow but now the question arises what happens in myeloma so we said in our previous videos in this series that you can go and watch on my channel that myeloma is a cancer of plasma cells and plasma cells 
are found in the bone marrow and increase in number if left untreated and when they do so they can affect red blood cell production in a range of different ways one of which would be just by taking up space so that there is less space in the marrow for normal blood production and that will of course be one way to cause anemia secondly these plasma cells can produce a number of different things that could impact the production of red blood cells some of it more directly and some indirectly now let's start with something we discussed in one of our previous videos and that was the increased production of immunoglobulins or antibodies in patients with myeloma and these antibodies or immunoglobulins can be deposited in different tissues of the body and in particular in the kidneys different parts of the kidneys may be affected this is an antibody and you can see that it consists of larger parts heavy chains and smaller light chains and these light chains can also be deposited um, separately from these whole antibodies and this could lead to kidney damage so if we have kidney damage from myeloma and take note that there are a range of different ways in which myeloma can lead to kidney damage and we'll discuss that in another video but this is one of the important ones this immunoglobulin deposition or antibody deposition when that happens, this will decrease the kidney's ability to produce erythropoietin. So erythropoietin levels may then start to go down, which means that the production of red cells in the marrow will also decrease because there is less stimulation by EPO. Another thing that can happen is that these abnormal plasma cells can start to produce a number of other chemicals which can directly affect the marrow and the stem cells and the early precursor cells that are supposed to lead to red cell production and stop them or inhibit them from working normally. These same chemicals can also negatively affect the kidneys and blunt or block the kidneys ability to produce EPO. Interestingly enough these same chemicals can also decrease the body's ability to absorb or use iron and decrease the bone marrow's ability to respond to erythropoietin. There's also been some interesting studies that showed that patients with myeloma have a higher incidence of vitamin B12 and folate deficiency. In B12 almost 20 percent of patients with myeloma have vitamin B12 deficiency and there's a number of theories why this happens. I'm not going to go into any detail here and the same is true for folate that about uh, 10 to even 15 percent of patients with myeloma may have folate deficiency in some studies then there are some rarer causes of anemia in patients with myeloma and this relates to some other um, cells that are not produced properly when the bone marrow is infiltrated by these plasma cells and one of these cell types is platelets now the work of normal platelets would be to prevent bleeding and when they are decreased severely this may also lead to bleeding and of course if there's bleeding uh, the loss of blood will lead to anemia. It is so that very rarely, and note that I emphasize very rarely, the immunoglobulins 
may affect certain clotting factors. And this can happen in different ways. But if it so happens that some of the clotting factors are decreased or blocked from working, that could of course also lead to an increased risk of bleeding, which in turn could lead to anemia. Lastly, it is of course very possible that the treatment that we use for the myeloma, chemotherapy for instance, that that could also affect the bone marrow because the chemotherapy may kill the bad cells, these cancer cells, but could also potentially damage the normal cells, which could lead to a decrease in the bone marrow's ability to produce red cells. So in summary, I think we can see from this that myeloma causes anemia in a range of different ways and that there's not a one-size-fits-all approach to anemia in multiple myeloma. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe, share and like below.